Gary the Great by Terry L. Moran Chapter 1 It was a cool and breezy September morning in the city of Northbrook where five-year-old Ethan lived with his family. There was his mom and dad, his 11-year-old twin brothers Dalton and Dayton, and his three-year-old baby sister Emily. Ethan was very excited to begin kindergarten in the next week, but was really savoring his last few mornings at home with mom and Emily. Whenever there was an errand to run, mom could always count on Ethan to get Emily buckled in her car seat before getting himself strapped into his own booster seat, followed of course by a final check from mom before taking off. On the second Tuesday of each month, mom would gather Ethan and Emily into the car and head off to the farmer's market. This was a ritual Ethan looked forward to every month. He loved the smell of all the fresh produce that filled the open air. The market also had a petting zoo where he and Emily could enjoy spending time with all the farm animals. It was an activity Ethan would surely miss once school started. Upon arriving at the farmer's market, mom would park as close to the booths as possible so that she could get Emily in and out of the car with ease. Mom, can I sit in the grocery cart seat this time, said Ethan. Now Ethan, you are much too big a boy now to sit in the front of the basket. Besides, where would I put Emily if you sat up there? Aw, Mom. Well, can I sit inside the basket? After getting Emily secured in the seat of the cart, Mom picked up Ethan and put him in the basket. Thanks, Mom. This way I can keep an eye on all of the cool stuff you are buying. Mom responded with smile. Hey Ethan, Mom said, what do you say we pick up some fresh fruit to go into that lovely ceramic fruit bowl Grandma gave us the other day? Good idea, Mom. Ethan responded with excitement. But where will we put the bowl of fruit? I was thinking the bowl would be quite beautiful and appetizing in the middle of the dining room table. That way dad and your brothers will want to treat themselves to a nice healthy snack between meals. Wow mom! You are always full of good ideas. Mom giggled with delight. After closing up the car, mom wheeled the cart full of kids into the market area. Ethan always loved the fresh smell of the market. As soon as they passed through the entrance Ethan lifted his chin to take in a big giant breath of air. Mmm, he said with noticeable enjoyment. Mom, can we get the fruit for the fruit bowl first? Emily added, yes mommy, fruit. Mom agreed and pushed the cart toward the produce. How about some apples and oranges, kids? Both Ethan and Emily responded with a resounding yes. Mom picked out the apples and oranges. I think a nice pear and a ripe peach would be an awesome addition to our fruit bowl, said mom. As mom squeezed each piece of fruit to test its ripeness she noticed that all of the peaches were quite hard and not very ripe. Well, I guess we'll get this peach and let it ripen in the fruit bowl. Mom, look. Grapes, said Ethan. Oh yes. Don't those look tasty? You know daddy loves grapes. But Emily was not at all excited about the grapes. Mommy grapes yucky. Oh, that's right, honey. Mommy almost forgot. You don't like grapes, do you? Can I pick out the grapes, Mom? Begged Ethan. Of course, sweetie. Just make sure you get a bunch that is plump and juicy. At that moment, Ethan began to imagine little quiet voices coming from the grapes. Pick us, pick us, we are plump and juicy. Ethan couldn't believe what he was hearing so he tried to listen closer. The largest grape on one of the bunch of grapes was telling the others something. Brothers and sisters, this is our chance. Plump up and look as juicy as you possibly can, so he will pick us. Most people don't know this, but fruit love to be eaten by people. Fruit consider being eaten by someone to be their ultimate destiny and main purpose in life. So fruit try as hard as they can to appear so appetizing that they may get to go home with a family and be enjoyed by some hungry person. The largest grape was named Larry. He called down to his littlest brother Gary and told him to plump up. 
Gary tried as hard as he could but just couldn't seem to plump up. Gary's sister Gracie, who was on the bunch right next to him, encouraged Gary, You can do it, Gary. Just close your eyes and try with all your might. Gary did as Gracie said. He closed his eyes and tried very hard and pretty soon Gary was able to plump up just a little bit. I knew you could do it, Gary, said Gracie. See, I told you so. All the brothers and sisters on the great bunch began to cheer for Gary. Big brother Larry said, Great job, little bro. I'm sure he'll pick us now. This bunch, mom. Ethan said, This is the one we should buy. Mom looked at the bunch of grapes and said, Great choice, Ethan. These look absolutely delicious. Gary, Gracie, and the whole bunch screamed with excitement. Yeah. We did it. We get to go home and be eaten. Mom bagged the bunch of grapes and put them in the cart with the rest of the fruit. After a short visit to the petting zoo, the three headed home to wash and prepare the fruit for the fruit bowl in the center of the table. The grapes were thrilled and excited to finally be going home with a family, so excited that they began to sing a little song. Chapter 2 Once at home, after laying Emily down for a nap, Mom went to the linen closet to get the tablecloth that she bought to go with the decorations on the new fruit bowl. Since Ethan was now tall enough to reach the tabletop, Mom asked him to help unfold and lay the tablecloth on the table. I think this will match perfectly the design of the fruit bowl Grandma gave us, Mom said. Ethan held one end while Mom held the other. Then they laid the tablecloth neatly upon the tabletop. Can I put the fruit bowl on the table, Mom? Ethan asked. Well, you are getting to be quite a big boy these days, however, the fruit bowl is made out of very breakable material. Why don't we do it together? So Mom and Ethan lifted the fruit bowl out of the dishwasher and carefully carried it to the table. Now, honey, we must make sure the bowl goes right in the middle of the table. There, I think that's perfect. Ethan agreed. While Ethan was down for a nap, Mom thought she would surprise both he and Emily by washing all the fruit and placing it in the fruit bowl. She started with the apples, then the oranges, and so on. She left the grapes for last as they needed more detailed washing. Mom was a little hungry and she saw the biggest, juiciest grape on the bunch. It was Brother Larry. With her two fingers, Mom plucked Larry off the bunch and popped him into her mouth. Yippee, yelled Larry. Hooray, cheered all the fruit as Mom woofed down Larry. Wow, exclaimed Mom. I think that's just about the best grape I ever tasted. Mom finished washing all the fruit and with a paper towel, dried them all off. Then she took them over to the table and arranged them neatly in the fruit bowl in a way that was most appetizing. Mom thought to herself, the children will be so excited when they wake up from their nap. While the children were sleeping, the fruit in the fruit bowl had a chance to become better acquainted. The grapes were so happy that their big brother was the very first to be eaten. Sure they would miss Larry, but it was more important that Larry was able to complete his destiny. The grapes were so proud that they made up a little song which they would sing each time one of the family gets eaten. Most of the fruit in the fruit bowl were generally quiet. All except Penny the peach, who was not a very nice peach at all. She was always bragging about how delicious she was and she would often pick on Gary because he was so small. How can someone as small and shriveled up as you ever hope to ever be eaten, Penny said to Gary. If you were big and plump like me, people would want to eat you. Penny's mean words made Gary very sad and so he had to be encouraged by his brothers and sisters. Don't you listen to that pithy Penny Peach. Gary said Gracie, you will get eaten and I assure you it will be way before anyone ever eats her. All of the other grapes in the grape family agreed. Oh you guys are so sweet to say that but I think Penny may be right. Who would want to eat me? Gary wanted to cry, but he was afraid that he would lose what little juice he had, which would make him even less appetizing. Cheer up, Gary, and have a little faith, will ya? Faith? What's faith? 
Faith is when you believe something will happen even though it looks like it might not happen. Oh, I see. Okay, dear sister, then it will be faith that I shall have. Oh, thank you, Gracie. Of course, Gary. What are sisters for? Just when Ethan and Emily awoke from their naps, Dalton and Dayton were coming in the door. The twins were at summer sports camp where they were learning how to play baseball. Mom called all the kids into the dining room to look at the fruit bowl. Wow, Mom! That looks great, said the twins. Yeah, that's cause me and Emily helped Mom pick out all the fruit at the market today, said Ethan. Fruit, said Emily. Hey, Dalton. How much you want to bet those grapes will be gone by this weekend, said Dayton. Dalton replied, no way. I know how much Dad likes grapes. That's a bet I'd never win. At that comment, all the grapes in the bowl began to plump and cheer with excitement. They could all hardly wait till Dad came home. However, Penny the Peach was not amused. She said to Gracie, I don't know why you and that shriveled up little brother of yours are cheering. Even if dad does love grapes, he certainly wouldn't enjoy eating either of you too. Penny's remark once again made Gary sad. But Gracie was beginning to get quite annoyed with Penny's comments and she didn't know how much more of Penny's attitude she could bear. Chapter 3 Ethan was the first to hear dad's car pull up in the driveway. Hey everyone! Dad's here! Ethan was so excited to see Dad's expression when he noticed the fruit bowl in the center of the table. The twins greeted Dad at the door while Ethan waited in the kitchen to see Dad's expression. As he walked in the dining area Dad said, When's dinner? I'm starving! Just then he noticed the bowl full of fruit on the table. Dinner won't be for a while, you'll have to grab a quick snack to hold you over, said Mom. Wow, is this the fruit bowl my mom gave us, said Dad. Before Mom could reply Ethan and Emily ran to Dad because they were so excited about the fruit. Why don't you have a piece of fruit for your snack, Dad, said Ethan. Hey buddy, which piece of fruit should I try? Happy. Happy. Said Emily. Okay, sweetie, Daddy will have an apple for snack. As Dad picked up the apple to take a bite, all the fruit in the bowl began to cheer and hoped that they would be the next to be eaten. After dinner and once all the kids were tucked into bed, Mom and Dad sat down on the couch to watch a movie. How about some popcorn, honey, said Dad. You know I would really rather have some of those juicy grapes in the fruit bowl, said Mom. Good idea, said Dad. So Dad went into the dining room and grabbed a handful of grapes and placed them in a little bowl. But Dad did not pick the branch that Gracie and Gary were on, but rather he picked the branch where some of the other brother and sister grapes were. Goodbye Gracie and Gary. We hope you get eaten soon, the grapes cried, as Dad delivered them to Mom in the living room. That night when the family was asleep, Penny Peach sang a song and talked all night about how she was sure to be the next piece of fruit to be eaten. She also continued with her negative attitude about Gary and Gracie. Gracie could hold back no longer and she gave Miss Penny Peach a good piece of her mind. The next morning while Mom was packing up lunches for Dad and the twins, she asked them which piece of fruit they would like for lunch. I'll take a banana, Mom, said Dalton. Can I have an orange today, Mom? said Dayton. And Dad said, How about a pear for me, honey? Wow! Mom said, If I knew the fruit would be this popular, I would have bought more. Gracie and Gary were so happy and grateful that most of their family had been eaten, but they were also a bit discouraged because they and a few others were the last of their family to remain on the stock, left uneaten. Saturday morning was a big day. Dad didn't have to go to work, but because he was head coach of the Twins Little League baseball team, the whole family usually went to the games. While Mom was packing snacks and getting Emily ready, Dad was packing up all the gear. Dad told the Twins to go outside and swing at a few wiffle balls until ready to head to the park. Wiffle balls are lightweight with holes and made out of plastic. They are quite incapable of busting a window like a real baseball. 
Dayton looked all over for the wiffle ball, but could not find it. Dalton said, if you can't find the wiffle ball just grab that old peach there in the fruit bowl. No one wants to eat that yucky thing anyway. So Dayton grabbed the peach from the fruit bowl. Bye bye losers, yelled Penny. I'm off to the baseball game to be someone's game time snack. But Penny was mistaken. The twins had something else planned for her. You be the pitcher and I'll be the batter, yelled Dayton. Okay, said Dalton. But if there's anything left of this peach after your swing, I get to go next. Dalton never got to turn it back because Dayton made a solid connection on the first swing and unfortunately Miss Penny Peach will never have the pleasure of being eaten by anyone. As the days progressed, one by one each fruit in the fruit bowl was eaten and enjoyed by the family, yet Gracie and Gary remained uneaten. One night mom was delayed with preparing dinner as she was late picking up the twins from practice. Dad arrived home quite hungry and a bit disappointed that dinner was delayed. Grab a piece of fruit from the fruit bowl honey. Dinner will be on the table in just a few minutes, said mom. In his reluctance dad proceeded to the dining room to see what fruit was available in the bowl. He was further disappointed to see that the only thing remaining in the fruit bowl were two shriveled up grapes barely clinging to the branch. In one quick swoop of his hand dad grabbed the branch that was holding the two remaining grapes. Since Gracie was the biggest and juiciest, dad grabbed her first. Gracie was so excited. See Gary. I told you we would be eaten. Better late than never right? I'll see you soon in dad's tummy. And with one gobble, down the hatch went Gracie. Gary didn't know whether he was more overjoyed that Gracie had been eaten or that his time was coming very soon. He closed his eyes as his heart raced in anticipation of what was to come. He felt dad's hand coming near him. However, at this time Gary was so weak that he could no longer hold on to the branch and before dad could reach him, Gary popped loose from the branch and fell to the floor. But before hitting the floor he bounced off the toe of dad's shoe and rolled under the table and across the dining room floor. He continued to roll through the entryway into the living room and stopped only after being entirely hidden under the living room sofa, completely out of sight. Still hungry and dropping to the floor in desperation dad grunted, where on God's green planet did that darn grape go? He looked under the table and all over the dining room floor but Gary was nowhere to be found. Honey, dinner's ready. Can you call the twins in to set the table for me, said mom. Dad was so excited that dinner was ready that he completely forgot about Gary and proceeded to carry out the task mom had assigned. Gary could not believe this was happening to him. Right when he was just about to be eaten he found himself trapped, hidden underneath the sofa with absolutely no hope of anyone ever finding him, much less eating him. In complete despair Gary began to cry, losing more and more moisture with every teardrop. He just could not believe how incredibly lousy his luck was. All of his family was gone. What would become of him? What indeed? Chapter 4 heard a voice. Stop all that blubberin' and a snifferin'. It makes me sick. Just stop it. Gary thought he was hearing things so he stopped crying just to make sure he was hearing clearly. Then the voice said. Now, that's much better. In the distance Gary could see two eyes peering at him from the shadows. Normally Gary would be scared, but since the worst thing that could ever happen to him had already happened, all he was feeling was curiosity at the moment. Who are you? Gary commanded. I demand that you reveal yourself at once. Okay, okay, cool your jets, said the figure as it slowly crept into what little light shined under the sofa. A cockroach? Gary replied observantly. Um, excuse me. 
said the voice. What? Are you blind? Anyone can clearly see that I am not a cockroach. Then what are you? Gary quizzed. Why I am a water bug and I resent the fact of you confusing me for a disgusting roach. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. It's just that I. You what? Well I. Yeah, whatever. Say, aren't you a fruit? Um. Oh yes I am. I am a grape. A grape? Well, I'd have to say you're about the scrawniest grape I done ever seen. What? Okay. Well, after what I said about you, I probably deserve that. What do you say we call it a truce? Yeah. I suppose we did get off on the wrong foot. Hello, buddy. My name is Walter. Hi, Walter. I'm Gary. Hi, Gary. Now what are you doing under the sofa here? Shouldn't you be someone's afternoon snack? Yes, I should. All of the rest of my family got eaten but me. A freak accident occurred and now here I am trapped underneath this sofa. Oh no that's tough luck kid. Well, what you gonna do about it? What do you mean? I'm not going to do anything about it because there's nothing I can do. My last chance of ever being eaten has ended in utter failure. What? You mean you give up? Oh no you don't. No one under MY sofa ever gives up. Your sofa? Yes, my sofa. I was the first one to ever be here so I claim it as my own. You got a problem with that? Why no? Thank you for letting me be under here with you. You're welcome, kid. Now, what you need, my friend, is a plan. A plan? What's that? Well, a plan is an idea, a sequence of steps that you construct to help you accomplish a certain goal. Walter sings a song about plans and success. Oh, okay. Now I understand. Do you really think a plan can help me get eaten? Oh, I'm absolutely certain of it, my boy. Then Gary heard a sharp screechy sound coming from the other end of the sofa. Wow! What's that awful noise? Awful! Walter exclaimed. Are you kidding me? That's the most beautiful music in the whole wide world. Music? Oh yes. It's the enchanting song of a one Miss Christy Cricket. She's coming this way. Hide me please. Walter ran behind Gary and hid like a scared little mouse. Hello. I thought I heard voices. But you're all alone. Are you talking to yourself? Um, yes. I was just trying to think of a plan so I can get out from underneath this sofa. Well. Can't you just walk or hop out? I do it every night after the family goes to bed. No. I'm afraid I can't. You see. I don't have legs like you do. Really? Why not? Well because I am a grape and grapes don't have legs. Oh. I see. How sad. Well what are you doing under here? It's a long story. Oh. Well my name is Christy what's yours? My name is Gary. Well, Gary, can I play you a song to help you concentrate while you come up with a plan? Oh, no. I mean, thank you. That's very nice of you, but I concentrate best when things are, well, you know, quiet. Then Christy noticed a leg sticking out from behind Gary. Hey, I thought you told me you don't have legs. What's that hairy thing behind you? Oh. Well. It's... Who's back there? Show yourself this instant, demanded Christy. Walter crawled out from behind Gary. Ah! A cockroach! Screamed Christy. No, no! This is my friend Walter. He is not a cockroach at all but, rather, a water bug. A water bug? 
Well, he looks a lot like a roach to me. Well, he's not. Tell her, Walter. Hi, Miss Christie. Walter said in a soft, shy voice. He's right. I am, in fact, a water bug and not a cockroach. Oh, well, that's a relief. I love the beautiful music you play, Christie. You do. Thank you, Walter. But why are you hiding behind this grape? Um, the name is Gary. Um, well, the light. Yes, the light was hurting my eyes, and so. Oh, I know just what you mean. Darkness is much better, isn't it? That's why I stay under the sofa until all the lights go out. Yes, me too. We seem to have so much in common. Miss Christie, you've got to be just about the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Oh, Walter, you are so sweet. I think I am falling for you. Really? Well, Miss Christie, if you would be my girl, it would make me the most happiest bug in this whole house, including the garage. Oh, of course I will, silly. Christie gives Walter a big kiss. Gary interrupts them. Hey guys, I can think of one more thing you can have in common. What? You can both help me come up with a plan to get out from underneath the sofa. Oh yes, of course. Sorry, Gary. Back to the task at hand. So how did you get under the sofa in the first place? Said Christie. I rolled under here from the dining room. Oh, okay, I got it. What? If you can roll under here, then that means you can roll out too. Well, normally yes, but I have lost much of my plumpness. I don't think I am even round anymore. Oh, yes. Come to think of it, you are rather oddly misshapen. You make a good point. And even if I was plump, I could not roll on my own without a good push. Chapter Five. I know, Gary. Since you helped us find love by introducing us, we can repay the favor by pushing you out from underneath the sofa. Oh, would you? That's the very least we can do for you, old friend. Yes. With both of us pushing, we should be able to give you a big enough push to roll you all the way to the TV stand. That would be awesome. Thanks you too. No problem, Gary. As soon as the sun rises, we will give you a real big push. You'll be in the middle of the floor before the twins come in to watch TV. Oh, that's a great plan. Just as Walter promised, as soon as the sun rose the next day, he and Christie were set for the big push. Are you ready, Gary? You bet. Okay. Now, on the count of three, we will give you one big shove. Okay, one, two, three. And with all of their might, Walter and Christie pushed Gary out onto the floor. As Gary launched across the floor, Christie and Walter hollered out to him, "Bye, Gary. Thank you for everything. Enjoy being eaten. Goodbye, Walter." Goodbye, Christy. You guys are the best. We e e e. Gary rolled across the floor. He rolled under the coffee table toward the TV stand. Gary was hoping to stop rolling just before reaching the TV stand, but instead he continued to roll and didn't stop until he was completely hidden underneath the TV stand. Once again, completely out of everyone's sight. Oh no! Not again! Gary thought to himself. I must have the worst luck on the planet. Gary couldn't believe it, but it was true. Once again, he was trapped, alone, without any hope of ever being found by anyone. Then Gary began to cry. He tried to stop himself because he knew if he cried, he would lose so much moisture that he would lose his roundness and would never be able to roll anywhere ever again. But he just couldn't help himself. He began to weep uncontrollably. He cried so much and for so long that soon there were no more tears left. He could feel his body drawing up as his moisture was completely depleted. He got so tired of crying that he cried himself to sleep. While he was asleep, Gary's sister Gracie came to him in a dream. She reminded Gary to never lose hope, even when things seemed completely hopeless. Gracie said that if his dream was to be eaten, to never give up on that dream. Somehow. 
Some way it can happen for those who believe. Chapter 6 When Gary woke up several weeks later, he heard the sound of Mom running the vacuum cleaner in the living room. Dad and the twins were out picking up the new Christmas tree so Mom wanted to clear a spot right in front of the window. She wanted all the neighbors to enjoy the festive beauty of the tree as they passed by the house. The TV stand was right in front of the window so it would have to be moved a bit to the left so the tree would fit into the space. The stand was on rollers so it was easy to move. Ethan honey, would you mind pushing the TV stand over so I can vacuum the area underneath? I need to finish before dad and twins come home with our new tree. Sure mom, said Ethan. Gary was horrified. He was afraid that when the TV stand was moved, Mom would vacuum him up along with all the other debris that had collected under there since the last time the space was vacuumed. If that happened it would be all over for him. Ethan moved the TV stand over to the left as Mom had asked, exposing all the items that had collected underneath. Look Mom! I found the army man I've been looking for, for like forever shouted Ethan. Along with the army man were several dust bunnies, a paper clip, two pebbles, a push pin, one of dad's cufflinks and of course Gary, all shriveled up and blinded by the light. Gary yelled out to Ethan. Help me. Please don't let mom vacuum me up with the rest of the junk, but Ethan couldn't hear Gary. No, it wasn't because the vacuum cleaner was too loud. Gary didn't know this but, once children begin kindergarten, they can no longer hear the voices of fruit and vegetables. As a matter of fact, the only one in the house that could still hear Gary was Emily, who could hear him calling from the other room. Just when mom was about to vacuum the area, she stopped to pick up the items that might damage the vacuum if they were sucked up. She collected the push pin, the pebbles, and dad's cufflink and put them all in her pocket. Mom turned the vacuum switch back on and began to move toward the leftover pile when the phone began to ring. Once again Mom turned off the vacuum so she could go answer the phone. While Mom was answering the phone Emily came into the living room to see what the screaming was all about. Gary continued shouting help me. When Emily reached Gary, she noticed one of her most favorite snacks was lying on the living room floor crying out to her. Though Emily certainly did not like grapes, she was crazy about raisins. That's right, Gary was no longer a grape. Losing all of his moisture from crying and being hidden under the TV stand for so long, Gary had turned into a wonderfully delicious raisin. So before Mom could catch her, Emily quickly swooped up Gary and popped him into her mouth. Wee! Oui said Gary gleefully as he, like all of his brothers and sisters before him, had finally become someone's perfectly tasty snack. The End <laughs>